the freedom that we have uh, given to us through Jesus Christ. So uh, let's uh, bow our heads as we prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this day that you've given us what a, what a beauty it is and uh, for the opportunity that we have to come and worship you, to uh, celebrate the freedom that we have in our country, uh, but more importantly, to, uh, to celebrate the freedom that we have found in you. And I pray this morning that you would help us to feel your presence among us and that you would be honored and glorified through the worship that we bring. And we pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? That's awesome. Awesome. If you notice, we had these lights on, and they just magically turned off. Nobody hit the switch. These, they, have, they literally have a mind of their own. And you know when that happens, that they're going to turn off at the wrong time every time. So anyway, if you see them magically come back on, nobody has hit the switch. They just magically come back on. So anyway, that's just, that's just part of living it. <laughs> see, we got one side. Yeah, that side didn't come on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But man, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day, as they all are, to come together and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's all stand together. If you're at home watching, stand up. Let's all stand together here. Lift our voices together. Sing out loud. doesn't matter whether you sing super or just absolutely horrible. Sing as loud as you can, man. Let's, let's, let's really let it hang out today. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Sing it out, here we go. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. Feel my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Sing it out. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Yeah, He's our Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. Yeah. 
Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as I. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. this morning for you are our God who removes all of our chains and sets us free and on this day when we celebrate the independence that we have as a nation we are most grateful that you have liberated us from the things that burden us and bind us Lord I want to thank you so much for our brothers and sisters in Christ of the Cumberland Hispanic Fellowship and thank you for their presence here this morning as they worship with us and as we partner with them in a ministry in your kingdom I pray that you continue to bless them and keep them Lord we uh, celebrate um, with those who have uh, new birth and their families we uh, thank you for uh, the birth of a grandson to Dr. Stewart and Joyce Galloway and a granddaughter to uh, Bruce and Carmen Wyatt. And I just thank you for these lives and pray that you would be with their families as they raise them, hopefully, in your church. We want to pray for those who have lost loved ones this week. We pray 
Christian sympathy to Dawn and David Bordenkircher and the death of her mom, and also to Bill and Catherine Stevens in the death of uh, Bill's brother. We pray that you would comfort them and comfort all who mourn this day by the presence of your Holy Spirit. We lift up to you all those persons who continue to be on our prayer list. But we uh, give you an update uh, with our voices this morning. Thankful for the success of Michael White's surgery and pray for his recovery. We thank you that uh, Michael Bond is back home from an extended stay in the hospital and that Beverly Brenner uh, is recuperating from her surgery this past week. We want to also pray for Doug Hensley's dad as he continues to struggle in his health and for for my mother who continues to be in the hospital and for all those, God, that we name in our hearts before you. I pray, Lord, for all those who serve in our community. Pray for those who are in the medical field and those who are first responders and for any persons who uh, serve in the community and are sometimes faced with a, a backlash because of uh, people's disapproval I pray that you would remind them God that you have called them to their service and remind them of their purpose I pray uh, for uh, this congregation and uh, our friends at the Cumberland uh, Hispanic Fellowship and I pray that your Holy Spirit will be poured out upon all of us this morning and every day as we endeavor to be the individuals and the uh, community of faith that you've called us to be and we pray that you'll be honored and glorified through our worship this morning for it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Before we sing this verse, this last chorus again. Let's do something crazy. Keep playing. Keep playing. Because we are free. And we're made for Christ. Absolutely free. Let's all, if you're comfortable with it, let's all lift our hands. Let's all lift our hands right now. And let's be, let's be joyful in our freedom. Our Lord and Savior cut our chains free. We are free. Here we go. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns on anyone. So beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. You may be seated. Hey, boys and girls, Mr. Doug here with my best friend Sally, and we're going to talk to you about something. Wait a minute, before we get started here, you look a little, wait, you got something on your side there. Yeah, how did you get something on your side? Well, luckily for you, it's not a thorn. Yeah, hey, did you know we're going to talk about Paul? You know, Paul had a thorn in his side. Yeah, it was like something that caused him pain and everything. Yeah, and he asked Jesus a bunch of times to remove it, but Jesus left it there. Yeah, 
that's a good, we'll talk, let's talk about that thorn today. But before, oh man, I just realized that this box is in the way, Sally. Here, let me get this box here. Let me move it. Are you helping? Okay, here we go. Well, maybe I should slide it. What do you mean I need to ask for help? I can get this. We can get this. We can move this box. I guess we can't move this box. Huh. You know, that reminds me of what I was going to talk about today. You know, boys and girls, a lot of times we get things in our life, problems, things that stay on our minds, that we can't move on our own. We can't overcome them. And so we ask sometimes, we'll pray and say, hey, remove this. God can remove anything and everything. But sometimes he leaves it, like he did with Paul. Because in our weakness, we find that his grace is all we need. That he reminds us that even though we might think, oh, I want this problem to be gone, he's there to bring us comfort and to bring us love. And that's very important. And he said that a lot of times, you know that, Sally? He said that his grace was all we need. And in our weakness, we find that. And so when we feel that we have stuff that we should be gone or we have problems, always remember that God's grace will get us through those times. And he is there always with us because he loves us. Know that we love you and we're praying for everybody and we hope to see you in church. Talk to you later. Bye. Good job, Doug, again. Now's the time in the service where we get to continue to worship because our tithes and our offerings are just another way to worship our Lord and Savior. You know that feeling you get when you help somebody? It feels good to help somebody, doesn't it? Whether it's just picking up, you know, maybe somebody didn't realize they dropped something, you pick it up for them. Or you hold the door open for somebody. It's such a good feeling. And at times, we all wish that we could just help everybody. Wish we could help the entire world. But unfortunately, we can't. But one way, we can't do it on our own, but one way that we can do it, one way that we can certainly have that feeling that you get when you do something good for people and have that feeling of satisfaction. One way that we can do that. One way that we can do that is to give money to the church because there's so many people here and there's so many ministries here. I mean, it would take forever to go through the whole list of ministries here. But there's so many here and they all do such great work. But they all need support. They all need our support. So let's be cheerful. Let's be sacrificial. Let's be loving in our giving. And know that when you, when you put that check in the plate or you put it in the basket, you should get that good feeling in your, in your soul that you get when you hold the door open for somebody or you cook a meal for somebody or anything. So when you're giving today, Open your heart, open your soul. And let's be giving. And let's be thankful. Will you pray with me, please? God, your blessings, we, 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 can't even, we can't even begin to list them all. We're surrounded by them right now. We're surrounded by them everywhere we go. We're surrounded by you everywhere. God, help us to see that. And God, help us to be willing to help your kingdom show up here on earth, God, whether it's by our giving of our time, giving of our talents, writing that check, whatever it is, God, whatever it is, help us to do it freely, do it lovingly, and help us to be a reflection of you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. And for those watching online, there is a, there is a slide there showing how uh, different ways that you can give there. So let's 
continue to worship here. As always, the lyrics are on the screen, so anytime you feel like singing along, sing along. I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God. We'll finish what he started. Yes, our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not done, greater things still to come. This is my testimony from death to life, because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. This is my testimony, from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. Thank you, God. We are grateful that our friends uh, from Cumberland Hispanic Fellowship are here with us this morning. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we will be praying for you guys uh, during this season of transition as you have lost uh, your pastor. And feel free to call on any of us if you need anything at all. 
This morning, I wanted to invite everyone, if they feel uh, led to do so, to stand as uh, the scriptures are read. Uh, this morning's epistle lesson comes from the uh, Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. Will you hear these words? I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to, to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. May God add a blessing to the reading of the hearing of these holy words. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you uh, pray with me? God, we, uh, we praise you and thank you again for allowing us to be here this morning. And God, I pray that you would speak to each and every person under the sound of my voice and uh, give them a message that particularly applies to them personally to their situation that today they may find freedom in you and I pray this morning that you would remove me out of the way in order that you can move in and through us more effectively help us to experience the power of your presence among us this morning and every day and we pray this in the name of of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. This morning I wanted to add, begin by asking you a question. How many times have you uh, had a something or someone that was just a nuisance to you? Something that just got on your nerves that irritated you and you felt like that you can never get rid of it. Well, the Apostle Paul would call something that stands in the way and becomes a stumbling block to our growth as a person and as a disciple of Jesus Christ a thorn in the flesh. 
I don't know about you, but growing up, my mother had another phrase for that when I got on her nerves and irritated her and was a nuisance to her. She said that I was being a pain in her back end. That's kind of like being a thorn in the flesh, isn't it? Being a pain in the back end. I want you to realize this morning that when Paul uh, communicated these words that he was given a thorn in the flesh, uh, if you read the Greek and go deeper, it really is much stronger than that. And it really should be translated that Paul was given a stake in the flesh. The primary use for a stake in Paul's day was to, to torture someone. Most oftentimes uh, the enemy. But Paul felt so strongly about whatever ailment was standing in the way of his becoming the person that God had created him to be. He, he felt that this was such a dilemma in his life and a malady that he possessed that it was described by Paul as a stake in the flesh. It's interesting that the dilemma in which Paul found himself, he was vacillating between the idea that uh, whatever this obstacle that had overtaken his life was given to him by the enemy, Satan, and yet he believes that on the back end, God was, God was utilizing this stake in his flesh in order to achieve divine purposes. That's a good word for us this morning, isn't it? It's a reminder to us that when things happen to us that are uncomfortable, that are very painful to us, that it is not God who gives those things to us, but we can rejoice in the fact that when things are going uh, very painfully for us and we're struggling through life, that God takes that malady or that circumstance or that event that you and I are struggling with and God brings redemption out of it. That's a word that all of us can rejoice in this morning, that God takes the unpleasant things that happen to us every single day and God redeems them for, for God's purposes. It might interest you as we um, contemplate what this stake in the flesh that Paul refers to. Throughout the years, uh, scholars have debated what, what this might be. Some of them have said, that Paul may have possessed epilepsy or he may have had poor eyesight or he may have been regretful of the times when he had persecuted the church over the years prior to having a, an encounter with God. But we are uncertain what exactly was Paul's stake in the flesh. We just know that if he describes it in such a manner that it is something that is very torturous to him. It's not just something that kind of nags him a little bit, but it's something that he lives with the torture of it. Have you ever been in a situation in your life when you felt tortured by a situation or a person or a thing. The good news this morning is that nothing that we experience in life is beyond the help of God, that God continues to pour grace out of, into those unpleasant circumstances, and God desires very much to redeem those.
As we read in uh, chapter 12 of the book of 2 Corinthians, we find that Paul is, he is very irritated uh, somewhat at the, the members of the church that he had founded, the church at Corinth. But what is really giving him an irritation is this group of people that had come into the community of Corinth. And Paul describes them as a group known as the super apostles. If you read the, the book of Corinthians, you'll hear, hear that reference a few times. But the reason that Paul is so angry at this group of super apostles is that they have been trying to undermine his ministry at the church in Corinth. This church of Corinth was one that Paul had founded with his own hard work and labor. It was his baby. And there was these people who were fly by the night, preachers who came in there, boasting about their experiences with God and how, how religious or spiritual they were, and Paul was irritated about it. I was thinking this week that, that all of us should be irritated at those persons who are hyper-spiritual and they want the things that they experience or the things that they do or say to draw attention to themselves instead of Jesus. Your primary purpose and my primary purpose here on the earth as a faithful follower of Jesus is to direct people to see Jesus in the world. Not, not for people to look at me or to look at you, but to deflect the attention off of ourselves and place it on Jesus. No wonder Paul was irritated at them. And so Paul is angry with them because he is because they have undermined and they have gotten into the congregation and they have lessened Paul's influence with them. They were listening to these super puzzles. Well, look at these guys. They have experienced this magnificent encounter with God. And Paul was angry about it. And so that gives, you, gives us a little context on why Paul uh, does an unusual thing in 2 Corinthians 12. He speaks about himself in the third person by saying, I know a person who 14 years ago was caught up in a revelation from God. Paul didn't say that he was the one, but... Afterwards, he revealed it to them that the person that he had been speaking about in the third person was none other than Paul himself. But he said that, that this person that he knew, talking about himself, had been caught up in either a dream or a vision or an experience with God, and he didn't know he was he was really unconvinced whether he had really heard God speaking to him or whether he dreamed it or whether it was a vision that had been given to him by God. But he says he not only was caught up in the third heaven, but that he explains it later, that he was taken into paradise, having a marvelous encounter with God. He looked at the people in the church of Corinth and said to them that if anybody had a reason to boast in their spiritual experiences, it was, it was Paul himself. And yet he said, I will not do that, that I will remain silent and I will boast only of my weaknesses because I have found that in the times when I am the weakest then Jesus is the strongest.
Paul wanted them to know that he was at least on the same level with these super apostles, that he had had an encounter with God that superseded any of the accounts that they had uh, as super apostles. But the difference between Paul's spiritual experiences and the super apostles was that, that Paul deflected the attention off of himself. And he wanted people to praise God. And then we find that uh, Paul looks at the church of Corinth and he said to them, if there is anything that I want you to boast about my life, it is not, the, not these grandiose experiences that I've had with God of visions and dreams and such, but the thing that I really want you to pay attention about my life is the things that I say and the things that I do. Wow. Should that not be all of our calling cards this morning for people to look at us and they will know that we are followers of Jesus by the words that they hear us speak and the things that they see us do. That's being a good witness, isn't it? Paul said, I, if there's anybody in the history of the human race who has cause to, to brag about him or herself, it would be me, but I will not do it because I, I do not want people to look at me. I want them to look at Jesus and what he has done in my life. And then he says to the church at Corinth that there was given me this stake in the flesh to keep me from being too elated. A messenger that he, that he attributed to the enemy, Satan. Have you ever felt the voice of the enemy speaking to you and using your shortcomings or your failures to make you get knocked down on yourself? feel defeated or afraid or uninspired. But in the same note, Paul says that even though the, the enemy tried to use this stake in the flesh to suppress me and to prevent me from becoming the person that God has created me to be, uh, God took it on the backside and God says that this is the way in your weakness that the power of Christ has been demonstrated to the world. The reason that Paul could say that with great assurance is that you and I know that it is human nature when things are going smoothly for us and we have no troubles or trials or pain that we have a tendency to rely on our own strength. And the apostle wanted us to, to be reminded that in the times when we cannot fend for ourselves or cannot go another step uh, along the way, that that is the time when we are more capable of trusting Jesus. We know that we cannot make it without him. And so when we are weak and unable to go another step along life's journey, we call to God. It's, a, it's an act of great trust and obedience when you feel the stake in your flesh. I have, uh, for the past uh, 35 years around that, um, I have been dealing with something that I feel like has been a stake in, in my flesh. 
In my younger years, I was uh, very athletic and participated in all sports and was able to, to run miles and miles without getting tired or, or to run sprints up and down a basketball court or to endure anything that uh, came my way physically. But, uh, but when I became a young adult, I was diagnosed with severe asthma. And uh, on a couple occasions in my uh, 20s and 30s, uh, it got so bad that they almost put me on a ventilator in the hospital because I couldn't breathe. I would have acute attacks of, um, of asthma, and I'd have to use my rescue inhaler. And I remember that even, even this morning, uh, after all of those years, I pray daily in my daily devotions. I pray for God to bring me healing of that. And I remember I used to get upset about God not healing me uh, completely because I said, God, you've called me to be a preacher. And God, if there is, if there is any, any uh, occupation or vocation that requires that you have good breath support and, and a strong voice and good convictions uh, where that you can breathe easily, it is uh, a pastor, a preacher, a proclaimer of the gospel. And day after day I pray, even in this week. God, bring me healing of that. It's interesting that um, over the years that even though uh, I can't speak for very long periods of time in a conversation without my voice trailing off, even in sermons, my voice trails off if the sentence gets too long. I pray, God, Remove the stake from the flesh. Sometimes it's discouraging when it doesn't happen because if anything I, I would hope for my own personal life, it is to have, a, to have again that strong voice of my youth, the deep, strong, powerful voice to proclaim the good news of Jesus. But the thing that I've come to recognize by reading 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is this. I can hear the voice of Jesus speaking to my heart. Saying that my grace is sufficient for you and for you. For in our weakness, the power of Jesus is made strong. When I am at my weakest point and when it's your, it's your most vulnerable place and we cannot feel like that we can make it another second, in our weakness, Jesus is made powerful because we trust in him. And Paul finishes his speech to the church of Corinth by saying these words. He said, because of this, meaning because of the power of Christ being made manifest in my life and your life, I will be happy to boast of my weaknesses. For when I am down, Jesus is at his most powerful place in my life. There are not many people who are willing to boast of their weaknesses, are they? Unless they want to be given self-pity. But the Apostle Paul communicates to us this morning and every morning that we should boast of our weaknesses because in that place of 
of our greatest need, Jesus demonstrates his power and his authority over all of life. And so the apostle says, therefore I will, I will uh, glorify in my weaknesses and my insults and my hardships and my persecutions. Not because he wants to experience those negative feelings in his life. But it's because he knows that when he struggles the most, that is when God can do the most in his life. And I think that's a good word for all of us this morning. Many of us came to church this morning and we were experiencing a stake in our own flesh. It may have been an emotional or spiritual one of the sins of our past rearing their ugly head, making us feel in condemnation. It may be that uh, spiritual stake that uh, we feel that because of our sinfulness we may, do not measure up to deserve God's grace or love. It may be a physical condition that we've battled for years. And one of the things that I've found uh, as I get older, the older you get, the more stakes that you have in your flesh. But whatever that stake that's in your flesh that is torturing you, that is preventing you from becoming the person that Jesus created you to be, you need to hear the voice of Jesus speaking to you in your weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is enough. For in our weakness, Jesus' power becomes evident in your life and in mine. Today, as we celebrate the freedom that we have in our country to worship and the many other things that we are afforded to do, I want to celebrate first and foremost the liberation that Jesus has brought me and you from the thorns, the stakes in your flesh and my flesh that are obstacles to our becoming the person that Jesus created us to be. Let's all celebrate this morning and hear the voice of Jesus speaking to us that his grace is enough. His grace is sufficient for you and me. And when we are at our weakest point, Jesus at his, is at his strongest. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Hope that everyone received a uh, pre-made uh, communion uh, set and uh, get those ready as we celebrate uh, one of the sacraments of our Lord and all are welcome to the table. As I look at this loaf of bread, I'm reminded of the final meal that Jesus shared with his disciples just prior to his death. And as they were sitting around the table together, Jesus reached down and he picked up a loaf of bread. And then he prayed a prayer of thanksgiving to his father, thanking him for daily bread. And he took the bread and he broke the bread and he gave it to each and every one of his disciples and said to them, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
After they had finished supper, Jesus again looked on the table in front of him and he reached down and he picked up a chalice that was filled with wine. And after saying a prayer of thanksgiving over the wine, Jesus passed the chalice around to each and every one of those disciples and said to them, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the human race for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you drink it in remembrance of me. We forget sometimes how privileged we are to be a part of a commemoration of that final meal that Jesus had with his disciples. His broken body and the blood that was shed on the cross for our redemption. But today I pray that we will always be grateful for opportunities such as this to remember our Lord's sacrificial love toward the human race. We invite you at this time to take your cup and carefully remove the outer level to uh, obtain the wafer of bread and remember that as we break it that Jesus' body was broken for us take and eat and be thankful Now peel back the final layer to reveal the, the juice. As we drink this morning, uh, we are mindful of, of Jesus' blood being shed on the cross of Calvary for the redemption of the human race and for people like we are. Drink and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you and thank you for the opportunity to be reminded of your sacrificial love toward us each and every day. And I pray that we all will be led to a closer relationship with you because we have been here this morning. All praise and glory go to you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. We want you to know as the praise team leads us that uh, you're welcomed come and pray if you feel led to do so. We all start on the outside The outside looking in This is where grace begins We were hungry, we were thirsty With nothing left to give Oh, the shape that we were in Just when our hopes seemed lost Love opened the door for us He said, come to table come join the sinners who have been redeemed take your place beside the Savior sit down and be set free come to the table Come meet this motley crew of misfits These liars and these thieves There's no one welcome here And that sin and shame that you brought with you You can leave it at the door And let mercy draw you near Come 
to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed Take your place beside the Savior Sit down and be set free Come to the table Come to the table To the thief and to the doubter To the hero and the coward To the prisoner and the soldier To the young and to the older All who hunger, all who thirst All the last and all the first All the paupers and the princes all who failed, you've been forgiven. All who dream and all who suffer. All who've loved and lost another. All the chained and all the free. All who follow, all who lead. Anyone who's been let down. All the lost, you have been found. All who've labeled right or wrong. To everyone who hears this song. Come to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed Take your place beside the Savior Sit down and be set free Come to the table Come to the table Come to the table Come to the table Let's all stand and sing our closing hymn today. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your children. Remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Sing it out. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Yes, your grace is enough, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Yes, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Let's keep singing here. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Yes, your grace is enough. Your grace 
is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Amen. Amen. Happy Fourth of July and just amazing time in worship. Uh, first announcements I want to give. Um, the flowers on the communion table are in memory of Don Hinch. That is given by Brenda Hinch. Um, if you're here, either online, uh, if you're on Facebook, give us a shout out that you're here. If you are here in person, there are prayer cards and attendance cards all together um, in the front of your pews. So be sure to fill those out and put them in the baskets where the offering goes as well. The church office will be closed tomorrow, and also the memoir writing group that usually meets on Mondays and any other groups will be the following, following week. Our good neighbor and clothing closet will be open the first and third Tuesdays of every month, so we have one coming up this Tuesday from 9 to 1130. So if anyone needs any kind of financial assistance for a bill or for clothing, and don't forget our Vacation Bible School is coming up in just a couple of weeks. And we have announcement sheets out to the front um, for all the announcements here. Also wanted to say that youth group will not meet tonight because we've got several out of town for the 4th. But all kids 7th through 12th grade or all teenagers are welcome to join us next Sunday at 5 o'clock. And be sure for all the kids that are ages 3 through sixth grade, be sure to sign up for VBS. And we'll turn it over to Brother Stephen. Thank you again for uh, your presence here this morning. And um, I pray that you will uh, receive the benediction as you leave. As you leave uh, this afternoon, may you go in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And in the times when you feel the stake torturing your flesh will you hear the words of Jesus speaking to you that his grace is sufficient for you God's grace really is enough for in your weakness the power of Christ has been made strong will you go in that assurance in the name of Christ So God, you wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. Surprise, surprise. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Yes, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me.